okay, you've had crispy carnitas, but have you ever had carnitas made with chicken? It's a little non-traditional, but it's a leaner option than traditional pork shoulder. And carnitas literally means little meats. And what we have here, my friend, is little meats. You got seared, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and then it's slow cooked in this pan on the stove top, a little bit of beer, non-alcoholic beer, a little bit of orange juice, some herbs and spices, and then it's broiled in the oven until it's nice and crispy. In about 30, 40 minutes, two pounds of chicken, you can make tacos, tostadas, quesadillas, all kinds of stuff. So, let's dive right in. I'll show you how to make it. I promise it's pretty easy. Start by mixing together two teaspoons of kosher salt, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and a teaspoon of ground cumin. Then add a pinch of ground cinnamon and cloves. It's optional, but I highly recommend it. Then we'll take half a white onion or about 100 grams and dice that. And we'll take four cloves of garlic. You can either mince this with a knife or I like to run it through a microplane. Then we'll take a large saute pan or Dutch oven and heat two tablespoons of olive oil. You wanna make sure your pan has enough surface area for two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And we'll cook these for four to five minutes until you develop a nice golden brown color and the chicken easily releases from the pan. If your chicken is sticking, give it a little bit longer, let that Maillard reaction occur. This will develop a ton of flavor and the chicken will easily release from the pan once it's finished. We'll flip this over just long enough to get a plate or a bowl. We're not gonna fully cook the chicken at this step. We're gonna transfer and set aside while we prep our braising liquid. You should still have a little bit of oil and rendered chicken fat in the pan, but if not, you might add a little bit more before you add the onion and garlic. You're only gonna cook for 30 to 60 seconds here until the garlic is fragrant and starts to turn golden brown. Then we'll add a little bit of a 12 ounce can of non-alcoholic beer. You can use any beer or chicken stock, any kind of liquid here. We're gonna deglaze the pan Remove any of that fond, any of the crispy bits on the bottom. Make sure you get everything up so you don't have any burning. And then we'll add the rest of our beer and then a fourth cup or the juice of about one navel orange. Then finally, all that's left is the seasoning blend. Add that in, stir everything together. Now it's time to put the chicken back in. Leave the side that you seared, the golden brown side up, and then submerge about half of the chicken. If your pan is a little bit bigger, you may want to add a little extra liquid. In this case, you could use a little bit of water uh, just to cover about halfway up the chicken. Then we'll cover this and cook over a low heat for 15 to 20 minutes until the chicken is fall apart tender and you can easily pull this apart with forks, your hands, tongs, whatever. And then you wanna increase the heat to high heat while you're doing that to reduce the remaining braising liquid, kind of thicken that up a little. Five minutes should do the trick while you pull the chicken apart and then we'll toss everything together and pop it under the broiler. This step is optional, but if you don't do this, you're really missing out on a ton of flavor. The broiler on a high setting, put your rack in the top half for six to eight minutes and magic happens. And then you're ready to serve. I like to throw some tortillas in a skillet, warm them, get a slight charring and then I'll smear a little bit of guacamole, add the chicken, a little bit of queso fresco, salsa matcha, which is kind of like a Mexican chili oil, a little fresh lime juice, and you're ready to go. While this is a no-brainer for tacos, you could use this chicken to make salads, quesadillas, burrito bowls, all kinds of stuff. I'll put a link in the description below to the full post. It's got some more tips, ingredient substitution notes, maybe answer a few more questions, and it's also got ideas for things to do with your leftovers. So I hope you enjoy. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.